This is the story of how I got my dream sweet job. Just kidding. It's actually the start of your story, featuring actually useful coding interview prep advice, which hopefully helps you get your dream sweet job so you can pay off your student loans, lose your money to the stock market, live in an apartment with 15 other Swedes, and not bring dishonor on your family. Hello there. If you don't know me, my name is Maria, and I like to make technology videos on the internet. And welcome to Sweet Interviews 101 where I'm going to go over all of the tips and tricks that I used when preparing for coding interviews. If you didn't know, I had this whole 11 part series on my channel called The New Grad Diaries, where I showed the entire journey of me trying to apply for and prepare for and interview for new grad software engineering jobs. And I did end up getting some offers, but today I wanted to talk about all the things that actually worked for me to get a job and I did end up getting my dream job. I also wanted to include this quick disclaimer that interviewing sucks and proves nothing about you as a developer because no one practices this stuff on a daily basis. But to play the game, you've got to review things like data structures, algorithms, and design patterns. All right, so tip number one is choose one programming language to use in interviews and to get really good at and practice in. I kind of shot myself in the foot over the years by switching between different programming languages when I interview. At the beginning, it was JavaScript, then it was Java, and now I choose Python as my de facto programming language for interviews specifically because of how succinct it is. So it's very easy to type in interviews where there's a time crunch, and there's also a lot of built-in functions and data structures. There's so many libraries for Python that you can use. Choose one that you are confident in or the most confident at this point and try to get really good at that one and practice in that language. A lot of people use Java, Python, and C++ in interviews. Those are the most popular ones, I believe. So one of those would be really good because you can also find a lot of solutions online in those programming languages. Now that you've chosen your programming language of choice and maybe you started applying for jobs or you want to or you have some interviews lined up already, how do you actually prepare for that? How do you either review or learn data structures and algorithms? Because that's what you're going to most likely be tested on. So don't worry, if you've never learned this kind of stuff, or if you haven't reviewed it for a long time, I have so many free or free resources for you. So I first want to start off with some books that I'd recommend. And the first one is this chunky introduction to algorithms. I call it the colors textbook, like CLRS are the last names of the authors. And it's well over a thousand pages. I don't know what it says about me that this is like one of the books that I was super excited to buy in the last few years, but I love this book because it will teach you data structures and algorithms from zero to a hundred. Like every chapter is super in depth. It teaches you the theory. And I think it's super important to understand theory. Sure, you can grind leak code enough that you'll eventually understand why things work the way they do, but why not set yourself up for success by actually learning the theory behind things, why we even have these data structures, why these algorithms are important, how they help us, when to use them, and all like the runtime, time complexity, space complexity, those things. Like you need to know some of the math behind it. You might not be questioned about it, but it's important to understand it at least to a degree. It is huge. You will definitely not even get through this if you take a computer science degree. Like I've taken three courses, even the advanced data structures course didn't even cover all of this book. It's a really good reference that you can use throughout your entire career. So I think that this is a very good book for learning computer science theory. Also in terms of learning data structures and algorithms, I found two online resources for free. One of which is a medium blog called Base CS, which I will obviously link in the description, everything that I mentioned. And I really like it because the author includes so many diagrams, which I think are super important because a lot of these things you need to be able to visualize and I think a lot of textbooks are missing those visualizations that help people like me who are visual learners actually understand what's going on. And everyone in computer science loves free code camp and they have their own interview prep course online, which I'll link in the description as well. All right, so tip number three, after you have reviewed data structures and algorithms or learned it for the first time, then it's time to review things, right? And practice wrong. <laughs> you should have been doing that at the same time as when you're learning and reviewing. So the way that I would recommend doing things 
is stick to one data structure or algorithm or even pattern for coding and practice that right after you learn it or review it practice it and try out different levels of questions how can you actually do that that's where we get into more resources so everyone has probably seen this very bright green cover maybe this will be my next hair color who knows but this is cracking the coding into review and it's mostly just questions and answers so it's a good place for you to practice before it used to be a very good tool for you to whiteboard and practice whiteboarding interviews because they literally say in this book you should actually use a physical whiteboard but now that interviews are online mostly yeah you can just code this stuff up if you want and i have definitely been using this for the last few years but i would say it's not really my favorite book or favorite resource and i think a lot of people just recommend it out of habit because i think there's way better resources out there and way better explanations to problems which i'll mention later on but this book is mostly just that. It's mostly just questions that you can find online for free and then different types of solutions for them. But what's good about it is that they do mention like what the engineer interviewing you will be thinking of because this is written by someone who did a lot of interviews, of course. She explains what she's looking for in people who answer these types of questions. The one thing I would say that I really like about this book is the introductory section, which is quite long. It's like over, yeah, way over 70 pages. So it talks about how to actually prepare for interviews, behavioral questions, how to answer technical questions. So I'm going to actually make another video about what to do in the actual interview and how I go about it. So subscribe to stay tuned for that video coming up. And I should also mention that I have seen questions from this book in interviews that I've had. So that's pretty useful. All right, one more book that I actually own, and this is like a holy grail, is Elements of the Programming Interview in Python. This is what I wish CTCI was obviously much shorter, much more in-depth explanations, really nice code, like very clean code. So it taught me about how to write clean code for interviews. And what's really good is that at the beginning, they have a whole chart of how you should try to use this book, depending on how much time you have and how much time you want to dedicate towards this. A lot of it focuses on going for more of a breadth approach rather than an in-depth approach. So that means going over different problems in using different data structures rather than focusing on one data structure and then going in depth with that because if you have less time, then you need to cover more ground, of course. Okay, now that we've gone through all of that, I'm gonna tell you how to actually practice doing these questions. This might be controversial, but I don't like the phrase grinding leak code because I don't like grinding leak code or I don't like being forced to do it. Like if leak code was just a fun thing, then I would do that. If I wasn't actually having to prepare or feeling like I have to prepare for interviews doing it, then I would do it more. But because I actually do enjoy data structures and algorithms, like personally, but feeling like you have to do it doesn't make me want to do it. So if you are going to actually practice the leak coding, then I will explain how to go about solving questions or how I try to go about solving questions. So first of all, I would say that a lot of questions in interviews are going to be pulled from leak code or similar to leak code questions. Maybe they have more of a connection to what the company actually does. So they might like rephrase things. HackerRank and CodeForces are other websites that you can use. They're more geared towards competitive programming, but HackerRank is also like some of the questions are very similar to interview questions that you will receive. I would say the strategy that you use to prepare for interviews depends on how much time you have. If you have two months, then definitely take your time, go through all the different data structures, go through all the patterns and spend time on it. Like you can say like one week on arrays, one week on linked lists, you can do that. But if you have less time, then you have to kind of make a schedule for yourself doing a similar thing, but less questions, of course, because you have less time. Also, if you have less time, try to cover more of the surface area in the problems that you know that you're weaker in. So for me, that would be more of graphs or dynamic programming. So that's what I try to focus on more. So the way that I would say that you should prepare for free is to go to educative.io, which is a website where there's a lot of courses. And there's this one very popular course called Grokking the Coding Interview Patterns for Coding Questions. If you want to buy that course, go ahead. There's also, if you're a student, and you have like a GitHub student account, you can get a discount and I'll 
link that stuff below. But if you don't want to buy this course and go through the patterns, like they have different patterns like sliding window or two pointer or different like traversals in graphs or trees, they have those patterns listed out. Take a look at those patterns and just Google them or search them up on LeetCode and then do questions based off of those different patterns. Because the easiest way to solve a question in an interview is to recognize the pattern and then you can break down the problem and it becomes so much easier once you already figure out what that specific pattern is because a lot of questions are just patterns in disguise i guess so my strategy is to find a time every single day when i'm free to practice because then that helps me build up the habit of practicing at that specific time like currently every morning i practice korean at a specific time so then that really helps me and with Leet Code, I do the same. I don't do Leet Code in the morning. I have learned that although I'm a morning person, I cannot think like that in the morning. So I do it more in the evening or at nighttime. And then I'll schedule time in my calendar to do that. How do I actually solve questions? Depending on what level the question is, and I would recommend starting with easy, like humble yourself. Start with the easy questions. And if those are too easy for you, then move on. But if you start with the medium questions or the hard level questions, just because you have an ego and you think you're super smart, it's kind of going to discourage you once you don't get those problems right away. So my strategy is to read the problem first, read it a second time if I need to, and then I will have a piece of paper and write down what they're asking me to solve. Maybe like the given inputs and things like that. You know, I guess this is like a scientific method or something I learned in like chemistry class or something in high school. So I think that that is similar to what you do in an interview. But instead of writing things down, well, you might write things down, but you might also just say these things out loud to your interviewer. Basically, think about the different ways that you would like to solve this problem. Think of the different patterns that you might be able to use because you know like different patterns. I think Grokking the Coding interview lists like 18 different patterns. So kind of like narrowing it down to which ones you could use or which data structures might be useful. Obviously thinking about the brute force solution and then like thinking about the rest and optimizing it. But I also set a time limit for myself for how long I should spend solving this problem. And that depends on the level or it can also depend on what type of problem it is because you might be weaker in a specific area and you might set a higher time limit for that area specifically. Maybe for like easy questions, like 10 or 15 minutes, you give yourself that much time, you try coding it, and at the end, you look at other people's solutions. I would always say, look at other people's solutions so you can learn from them and see how you can make your code better. I would also keep notes on which problems you got stuck on the first time so you can go back to them in a the few weeks and then practice them again and see if you've learned from your mistake. And I personally like to keep handwritten solutions of the problems that I found were hard so I can refer back to them right before my coding interviews. And then I can see like, oh yeah, like this is how they solve that question. And let me like review that and remember that. And maybe I can use that in my interview if that type of question comes up. Also, you can save your solutions on GitHub. Like I know some people do that. They make a repository and save all of their solutions that they can go back and look at how they solve things. Okay, so let's say that you're a lazy person like me and don't actually wanna code that much. All you have to do is what I said before, like the grokking the coding interview stuff, find those patterns, search them up on lead code, go through the problems, read the problems, don't even try coding them, go to the discussion tab, look at how other people solved it, Make sure you understand those solutions. If you don't, search them up on YouTube, watch videos of people solving them. My personal favorite YouTube channel for that is Neat Code. So do that and then you're okay. Like all the only problem is that you might be slow at coding things out. So maybe yeah, practice doing some questions, typing them out because it makes a better impression on the people who are interviewing you if you can easily like type things out and you know the syntax for things and you know what to use. So definitely do practice some questions, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you don't need to solve a lot of leak code questions to get a job. All you have to know is the theory, like I said, strong understanding of the theory. You can talk out loud essentially and explain your thoughts. You can code somewhat quickly or like at a normal pace. Yeah, you know the patterns, you can solve the question. Like that's all you need to do. I have not done a lot of leak code questions in my life. If I can do it, you can too. And all I did was use these resources. Other resources that I have never used but that I have heard are good are binary search, 
which is this website that kind of gamifies uh, solving these types of leak code questions with your friends, as well as Pramp, which is where you can actually practice coding interviews with random strangers. I also wanted to mention that not every question you're going to get is going to be a leak code question. I think that's really good. I don't like solving the same types of questions all the time. I like more practical things. Why? Because I like being a software developer and actually creating stuff. More theoretical things, they're interesting, but they get boring over time for me. I like actually applying things to the real world. And those types of questions you will definitely find in interviews because companies that are more creative with their hiring process will make up questions based off of their products and what they have been building. Maybe the interviewer will come in with a question and say, I solved this thing a year ago. I want you to show me how you would solve it. And I find those questions to be way more fun and way more rewarding to solve. So in those questions, you'll still need to think of data structures and algorithms that you'll need to use, but you can also show off your software engineering and design skills. Those are types of things that I think you can only prepare for by actually becoming a good software engineer and practicing and building things on your own. So go do that too. And I also want to end this video by saying that interviewing does not prove anything about you. All it shows is kind of how hardworking you are towards interviewing. So it's an extra skill that you'll need to learn just because that's the way things are right now. It does suck, I think, but you can also, I guess, look at it in a positive light that you're going to be getting better at these skills. And having a lot of software engineers who know data structures and algorithms very well is not a bad thing. I think that's really awesome. And it's going to help us create cooler technologies because we know all these more advanced data structures that maybe people like 10 years ago who didn't have to learn this stuff don't really think about on a day-to-day -day basis because they didn't have to think about it. So doing this kind of stuff, it's kind of like if you stop exercising, you're going to lose your abs. Not that I ever had any to begin with, but you're going to lose it if you don't use it. So that's why it's really hard to get back into the groove of things. I know it's going to be stressful and frustrating and demotivating at first, but if you keep doing it, you're going to get better at it. And you can watch my other videos about me doing internship interviews or new grad interviews and see how much I have grown, which is pretty cool because I was terrible at first and I had horrible confidence and I would like shake like a chihuahua before and during and after my interviews. And now I'm just way more confident in them because of how much I practiced and because I used all of these tips and I learned over time what worked for me. So with that, I hope you liked this video. If you did, like the video and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos from me. And I will see you next time. Bye.